Welcome everyone to another episode of Simply Nerdy. This is Anthony. I'll be hosting this episode today and I'm going solo. <clears throat> I wanted to make a quick recording of uh, just a little bit of a roundup of the latest news that uh, I personally am pretty excited about and, uh, and share it with all of you. So just two topics today. So the first uh, is actually quite a bit more pertinent of late. Uh, it deals with the newest Smash DLC character reveal. And then uh, I also want to touch a little bit on the, the latest information on the Origami King, Paper Mario, the Origami King. So um, have some exciting things to talk about today. But uh, I'll jump right in. So first of all, um, if you haven't watched the latest trailer for, or the trailer for the latest character reveal for Smash Bros, then you ought to pop over there before you take a listen. Uh, for those of you who already have, um, I just wanted to make a few comments on it. And uh, we, first of all, had it confirmed that the character is from ARMS, uh, and the one who's joining is Min Min. Uh, a very interesting character. Um, so I wanted to give my, some of my impressions on, uh, on her. So. First of all, it looks like she's got some of, well, probably the best attacking range of any character in the game. Um, she gives even the Belmonts uh, a run for their money with how far she can extend. And I suppose uh, that comes with the territory, considering that she's from ARMS, a game where you can punch a mile. So, <laughs> uh, so that makes sense. Um, during the presentation that Sakurai gave, uh, he kind of listed a lot of caveats to her character design, so I'm kind of curious to see where she lands in the tier lists of the professionals. Um, I'm, I'm not expecting her to be very high, but it could be kind of a surprise. And again, I'm, I'm not an expert here myself, so, you know, my commentary doesn't necessarily mean anything on that front. But, um, so when he was doing the presentation, uh, first of all, her, her interesting design methodology, which I thought was really fun, is that um, rather than having straight up normal special moves like most characters uh, the special moves can just control her right arm and the normal moves control her left arm and so um, it, it ought to make for a very interesting uh, battle style playing as her uh, because you can basically double up on uh, all your attacks um, and basically go for a one-two punch that maybe can cover some of your uh, uh, some of your options if you whiff on the first or um, you know, maybe help with some of her otherwise long lag uh, times for her moves. Um, that's kind of what it looked like to me, at the very least. Uh, when when Sakurai was doing the presentation, like I said, he, he did list a, a lot of caveats. It sounds like um, she does not do well in close range combat, and she's not much of an aerial fighter. So uh, when, I, when he said that, the thought that went through my mind is, oh, she sounds like a long range little Mac, which maybe is a step up from him, but, you know, we all know, uh, well, or at least it, it appears that, you know, that's a bad combo for uh, online competitive play. Um, he doesn't ever, little Mac doesn't ever seem to figure high in the, in the, in the list, and I think it's for those two reasons. Um, but it does look like Min Min has some interesting moves in her kit that maybe can make up for that. Um, but I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, anyway, in the presentation he showed how, you know, in close range um, encounters, whiffing a move is pretty easy to do and, uh, and getting a, a punished by a follow-up is also a, kind of an easy thing to, to have happen. Um, so basically his demonstration was focused on how, you know, as long as you can keep some good range between you and the player, uh, the other player, then, you know, she can be a force to be reckoned with. Um, seems like she's definitely uh, going to be a zoning character. So, um, anyway, I just, I'm, I'm very intrigued. You know, I always, I always like trying out some of these new characters, and uh, many of them don't generally, don't necessarily jive with me, but um, I'm very intrigued to, si to try out Min Min at some time. Um, it just uh, seems like she'll be, you know, if nothing else, a very, very unique playstyle. And, and on the point, actually, of um, whether or not she will figure high in the tier list, I do feel like one thing, you know, something she has going for her is that while most of her moves are long range based, um, she doesn't have, it's not like she doesn't have other options. They, um, uh, Sakurai illustrated how, uh, you know, if you 
when you're doing the normal moves, you know, your jab moves, if you do quick taps, then she'll do kicks, uh, you know, instead of her long range punches. And then there's also um, a sliding move for the down tilt and um, some basic kind of anti-air, uh, you know, spinning moves that she can do uh, as, as her neutral air, it looks like. Um, which I think actually could make her uh, still, you know, kind of offset some of those close range weak weaknesses that she might otherwise have because, you know, uh, you, she has like her long range options for, for zoning and if someone actually gets inside uh, your zone, then you can switch to these, these closer range jabs to maybe uh, mix things up and still keep yourself competitively viable. Um, so I almost wonder if those those jab moves might be some of the most important in her kit because it might kind of round out her weaknesses. Now again, <laughs> I'm not a, a Smash Bros Pro, so I, it may, you know, for anyone who might be a Smash Pro and is listening to this and, you know, you know, you might, you might actually listen and, and think, wow, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And if that's the case, then, then I am so sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, just from what I've seen in a lot of the commentaries, it kind of seems like while she does have some weaknesses, um, she might be able to still be a viable character. Um, the, the problem with her air game might still be uh, something that, that holds her back. But anyway, you know, it, it looks like a lot of fun. And some of her specials uh, look really cool. It's, it's nice in particular that you can switch out her right arm and, uh, you know, kind of mix up your strategies there. Um, it's, uh, you know, she's, she looks like she's set to be a, a pretty exciting new character. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And uh, it, apparently it's releasing on the 29th of this month. So we have less than a week until she releases. So we should be able to find out pretty soon and see what we all think. It sounds like, at the very least, she's one of those characters that would excel in, like, an eight-player brawl. You know, in, in those situations, you just equip the, the big... Um, ball and chain one, I forget what, what it's actually in called, called in game, but um, equip that and then just go to town. <laughs> she definitely seems like one of those characters that would, would uh, work well with opportunistic brawlers. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, either way, it looks like it's, it looks like a, a fun addition. So, uh, and then they also introduced some, some new um, costumes. I think the biggest one was probably Vault by, uh, Vault, let me try that again. Vault Boy from Fallout. Um, that's an interesting new addition. Uh, but beyond that, oh, uh, and then they also talked a lot about um, rematches on the spirit board. That actually sounds like a pretty cool thing. Um, I, you can get spirit points doing that. I don't. At first, I wasn't thinking it was a big deal, but then they, uh, but then Sakurai pointed out that you can actually do the spirit challenge rematches. Uh, with a team. You can have more than one person and uh, that actually was kind of exciting because oftentimes I mean Smash Bros is my go-to game when it comes to uh, a party game with friends But sometimes it just you know after a while we, we kind of get sick of just doing the same brawls and so I was kind of excited by that idea that maybe um, You know we, we can actually have an objective and work together in some of these spirit battles I don't know it seemed like a, an, an exciting idea even though in some ways it was kind of a side note to the presentation so um, anyway, some exciting stuff there. But uh, now I wanted to move on to uh, to do a little bit of catch up. Paper Mario the Origami King. So the, the recent trailer and some of the reveals there. Um, there, was, there was a few more details that they kind of teased in this latest trailer. And uh, um, I'm, I'm pretty excited with, you know, some of the things that they, they showed. So let me pull up my reference here. <laughs> I think one of the biggest things that I appreciated about this this presentation uh, or this trailer for for the Origami King is how it kind of put to rest some of the concerns that uh, those of us who are you know traditional Paper Mario fans kind of uh, were worried about. Uh, I'll just kind of go through you know the the list of things that that I had noticed. Um, first of all, I think the biggest thing for me was I really appreciated how how much more they fleshed out the the details of the combat system in the latest um, in the latest trailer. I know, you know, it, it doesn't, well, I mean, I don't know how much more they, they introduced, but um, I liked I liked how much more information they gave us, uh, first of all, on, on the different ways that you can 
um, line up the, the attack board. Um, I thought it was fun, for example, that it's not all just focused on, you know, forming a line and then attacking as many as possible. It looks like there's different formations that uh, um, are advantageous for, you know, doing a hammer attack versus a jump attack. Um, I, I think that, you know, even if that's, those are the only two formations that, that uh, you consistently address in the game, the idea that you still have to, to think of more than one way to, to group the enemies together to maximize your efficiency in battle is really kind of exciting because, you know, it makes you, it forces you to be a lot more cerebral in your approach to the battle systems and, and that's something that I always appreciate in an RPG. Um, another thing that I thought was a really exciting wrinkle that, that makes it even more strategic is that not only are there at least two different uh, types of formations that we've had um, confirmed so far, but that you don't only rotate uh, the board, you can also slide the board, and so you, you select um, you know, a particular section of the um, you know, fan section of the, the circle, and then you can take the blocks and push them actually even through the center circle where you're standing to the other side of it. Um, and so, you know, instead of just rotating, now you have to think of ways to rotate and slide to get them into the right locations, and then, you know, to you know, to be able to maximize the damage you do when you when you do you start your attack phase. Um, and I, I also really appreciate that they did that on a timer because, you know, if you if if it wasn't based on a timer, if you just could take your time until you got a, a good lineup, then you know the battles would kind of really slow down and not be all that exciting nor challenging. So I like the idea that, you know, you kind of have to think quickly on your on your toes, if you will, and um, find ways to, to create the best lineups for, for your attacks. Um, I The one thing I hope is that they also find a way to make that pretty challenging, like to make it so that it's really necessary to do those, those uh, lineups, because I feel like if the battle system is so easy that, you know, there's not really a need to do it and you can still just kind of breeze through, then that will be a little disappointing. And, you know, maybe they could introduce some difficulty levels. I'm always a fan of difficulty levels. I don't know why more developers don't do that, you know, create a, a really good difficulty toning so those who don't care for that type of stuff can just breeze through while those of us who do can crank up the difficulty and, uh, and make it more of a challenge. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, they at least they, they at least make it challenging enough that you feel compelled to um, delve into that strategic element so you can feel awesome when you do a cool strategy. I don't know. But I, I just thought those were some some slight new details that add a lot of more wrinkles uh, to the combat system that, you know, what they've already told us about that. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, you know, it isn't necessarily the traditional battle system that, that some of us maybe were hoping it would return to, but it's definitely still got more um, more of a RPG feel than Sticker Star and Color Splash had, and that's something that I'm really excited for. And, you know, if they find ways to add more strategic elements on top of bringing back those elements that we loved so much from, you know, the original and from Thousand Year Door, then I say more power to them. You know, let's just hope it's executed well, and honestly, I'm kind of expecting, based on what I've seen so far, that, that it will be. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, and actually, as a, a related segue um, <clears throat> to the battle system, one thing that also looks to have been confirmed based on some images... Uh, I, I'm, the source I'm using right now is from NintendoEverything.com. Uh, they have an article here where they kind of gave the synopsis of, uh, you know, a lot of the things that were revealed. One of them that... actually two of them. That, uh, that looks like some additions, or, well, clarifications. The weapon system. It looks like they're, they're kind of finding a way to do a little bit of a cross between the consumable systems from Sticker Star and Color Splash with um, a little bit more of an RPG-friendly approach to that. It looks like, basically, they're taking a bit of a Breath of the Wild um, equipment durability approach. Uh, the image I'm looking at right here, it shows it shows a list of equipped weapons and the not equipped weapons that are just sitting in your inventory. Um, they've got uh, they've got a bunch of different types here, and on the right side with the not equipped section, it shows uh, it shows one of the hurl hammers that he has in his inventory with a uh, basically a bandage um, symbol on top of it, which 
strongly suggests uh, that this is, you know, based on an equipment durability system. That hurl hammer was used until it broke, and now it's uh, it is not useful uh, and can't be used as as a weapon. However, the fact that it's sitting in his inventory still uh, still makes me think that perhaps there is uh, weapon repair capabilities, which is a really good thing. Um, I feel like that's one thing that I wish they would have done with Breath of the Wild, as well as make the durability just more durable in general. Um, so the idea that that you know we can repair things that that'll be really nice. I, I that's not confirmed, but you know it seems like a reasonable conclusion based on what I'm looking at here. Um, so that. That's kind of interesting take. Um, I think it's a much more healthy middle ground between you know what we're used to with like say Thousand Year Door versus the systems in Color Splash. I honestly really hated the the card system where every attack was consumed as soon as you used it. I I mean I it's just not RPG friendly in the slightest. Um, you know and and in some ways this still does make me a little nervous, but. Uh, I think that this is quite a bit more RPG friendly because, uh, you know, we have plenty of examples of games that implement weapon durability and, and still make an excellent game out of it. And, uh, you know, perhaps it'll just add more strategic elements as well. So, uh, so again, yeah, looks like there's weapon durability, um, but, you know, you get such a plethora of weapons that it looks like you'll still be good. And, and if they manage to make sure that the weapons have a reasonable amount of durability, then I think that this would actually be... Uh, an interesting and workable solution to, well, not solution, uh, you know, a, an approach to, uh, to the battle system. So um, I guess it remains to be seen how well it's executed, but I'm just relieved that there's not, you know, just one-time use consumable items here. Uh, <laughs> so consider me happy there. Another thing that, uh, that looks like they're doing is kind of, sort of, maybe a something that, that's similar to the badge system. It's called accessories, uh, based on the, the image I'm looking at right now, and uh, it looks like you can equip various accessories to improve your stats, your abilities. It looks like right here they have uh, one that gives more health. Um, I'm not sure what the, these others do, but you know, that, uh, that definitely seems like it's harkening you know, back to the old badge system, and uh, you know, that worked really well, so that's that's exciting. Uh, I guess what I'm getting at here is it looks like that while they're introducing a lot of new fresh changes, hopefully fresh in a good way, it looks like they're still doing things that are RPG friendly and, uh, and so that again makes me pretty happy uh, just looking at some of this, you know, some of these things. And then as for the rest, they just showed a little bit more about um, some of the exploration and world, uh, you know, ex well the world exploration and it, it looks really fun. Um, there's a, a confetti system where you throw it on little blacked out sections of the of, of the maps and uh, you'll get rewards for doing that. Kind of seems like it's a replacement of the color hammer from Color Splash, um, but, you know, far less central. And I think that's a good thing because, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun way to interact with the world without making it uh, annoyingly central to <laughs> everything you do. So that looks kind of fun. And then... Um, there's like the, the, the toads that you can find and get rewards for. I don't know, it's just, it kind of looks like they found ways to make the world really interactive and compelling to explore. So that's, that's exciting. Um, oh, and I forgot, how could I forget? Uh, it looks like that partners are making a return. Uh, in what form, I'm not 100% sure at this point. It, it, it was never made clear, it doesn't, it, they didn't, confirm that they stay in your party throughout the game once you've gotten them. You know, there were some theories that maybe they're area specific, uh, kind of like Kingdom Hearts. When you go to a Disney World, you only get that particular Disney character while you're there. Who knows how it might work? Um, but, you know, the fact that they're returning at all is a big plus, because I feel like they also add a lot of depth to, you know, the original two games. So that's, that's a big deal. Again, they didn't tell us a whole lot there, but it looks like they can be involved in battle. So that's, that's also exciting. Um, and I guess there's, they, they didn't reveal a whole lot more than that though. So I guess there's a lot that remains to be seen, but we probably, we, we don't have to wait long. You know, we've got less than a month until this game releases. So there's a lot of things to be excited about. Um, and I could, I could definitely go on further. I, uh, for example, didn't even touch on the, the way that they change up the, the ring battle arena system for, for bosses. Um, it looks like there's, it's gonna be more of 
kind of a, almost a puzzle solving thing where you have to create a path for yourself to get to certain weak points on the boss or you know to, to get a chance to heal uh, or just attack. It, it looks like though it's um, a system that is chock full of the trademarked Nintendo um, innovation and cleverness and I'm really really excited to see what they do with it. It could be really awesome. That's kind of my thoughts so far. I'm pretty excited about that one too. There's, there's a lot of good stuff here to see and uh, in less than a month we'll find out how good it is. So um, consider me excited. As a, as a traditional Paper Mario RPG fan, you know, a lover of the Thousand Year Door in particular, you know, I love that game so much. Um, I am pretty encouraged. I'm pretty excited by this. So, anyway, you guys, uh, well, you, you heard it here first. Uh, thanks for listening in. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, if you're excited about Min Min as a new Smash character, and if you're looking forward to um, Paper Mario, the Origami King, uh, if it looks like it actually is a return to form. And uh, I guess we'll just all find out very soon. Thanks again for listening, everyone. And until next time, keep it nerdy.